right of it. <laughs> Okay, no, I, you're fine. Yeah. I just want to go Thank God for his goodness and his mercy. Yes. And the opportunity to be in the presence of the Lord here this morning. Yes. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Yes. It is the power of a living God to be able to change and to turn this around. Thank God when we look at it and realize that he went to Calvary for you and I. That makes it a beautiful day. When our load was lifted, sin was taken away. Thank God for the opportunity to worship Him. I want to welcome everyone here. Thank you for being here. And we're excited about what God is doing. Amen. In Baker City and all in the Baker County. Thank God for His goodness and mercy. Let's just continue to worship the Lord. exciting what God is doing as he's working in our lives and our hearts I'm excited about what God's doing in Baker County it's been exciting what he's doing and I you know I was thinking about it next year or the next time we get to do this on a Sunday at the 4th of July should be about five six years we'll probably pack this place out by then it'll be fun it'll be exciting have this thing packed out maybe we'll have both sides packed out who knows we have to set up on the other end who knows what God will do, but it's exciting. Worship God with us. Will some grand morning when this life is over?
you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Are you thankful for the power that only Jesus' blood can do? Hallelujah. Thank God for that precious blood that he shed for us. Thank, Thank you, Jesus. Thank, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, my God. When everything is gone wrong, I've got my back to the wall. Satan's coming on strong. He really wants me to fall. He sends trouble my way. Even sickness is part of his plan. By myself I won't win. So I'll just throw up my hands. I just throw up my hands. Start praising the Lord. I won't give up because I stand. On His infallible word. When I see my hands raised, He comes down. ways to go I could still wear a smile or oh, let it bring me down low Satan whispers you're through but, but I hear Jesus tell me to stand what am I gonna do I think I'll throw up my hand Jesus. Thank you, 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 Jesus. Praise God. What an awesome God. Hallelujah. To be able to feel His presence, to know that He's real. No matter what, Jesus is real. Hallelujah. Place called Calvary. 
by the precious blood of Jesus, the debt's been paid for me. I'm going home with Jesus in a twinkling of an eye. I'll make my way. Are you glad for a hope? A hope outside of this world. Paul said that if we only had hope in this life, we'd be of all men most miserable. I thank God for a hope that's beyond us. Thank you, Jesus. He is so good to us. He is so gracious and merciful. Hallelujah. Well, it is just a delight to be here with all of you today. Excited to be having church outside. Again. Hallelujah. Looking forward to tonight out in the park. Be a fun time there at six o'clock tonight every sunday night in july we'll be in the park having church outside it'll be a great time park and baker looking forward to that and i want to appreciate say thank you to all of you that helped get all this set up appreciate chris graves wherever he's at appreciate his help getting everything set up for us to be able to do this this year and uh, thankful for the committee here letting us have this time you may be seated it is a wonderful thing to be here today. Worship God in, uh, in the arena. Yes. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Thankful for what God is doing. Yes. See how this works out for us here. Sometimes technology is awesome and sometimes it's not. We'll make it do our do it do what we want. Thank you, Jesus. I want to go to the Word of God today. We're going to begin in the book of Luke, familiar portion of Scripture to many of you, in Luke chapter four. In Luke chapter four, we see in Luke four and verse eighteen. We see Jesus has just gone through the temptations. He has returned in the power of the Spirit. He's coming to Galilee. He is now back. The fame of him is going out. And as he comes into Nazareth, his hometown, he comes back in. And he's in the, he's in the synagogue. He is there on the Sabbath day getting ready to read. They give him the book of Isaiah. And he begins to read in Luke chapter 4 and verse 18. If you don't have your Bible, you can read it on the screen. Or, oh, wait. No, no screen. Just kidding. Some of you do. Uh, <laughs> All right. Luke 4 and 18 says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And I want to take just a little bit of time today and I want to talk about the hope that we have in Jesus. I want us to talk about the hope that he provides. Would you join me as we pray and ask God to help us and bless us today? Oh God, we thank you for this time together. We thank you for this opportunity to be where you are, where you can bless us and touch us and help us. Thank you for this opportunity today. Thank you for being in this place. Thank you for speaking to us. Let your spirit and your power have its way. Let your spirit and your word unite today to do the work that only you can do for your glory, for your honor, for your purpose. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. I will say today that I, I intend to preach 
and I hope that everyone will preach with me and join with me. But I also realize and recognize that I'm preaching to a lot of a lot more than are right here today. I recognize that I'm preaching to, uh, and you'll see it here in a minute. But I'm preaching to the spirits of this valley. I'm preaching hope to people that may or may not be here right now, but some point they're going to catch on to what I'm saying. Uh, as we look at the scripture, we see in our text that Jesus came to bring hope. He came to preach the gospel to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. We see three of these things that he talks about are preaching. And the necessity of preaching is, is, is often understated. And the, the power of preaching and, and the, the ability of preaching to be able to break through uh, walls and barriers is often underestimated. We live today in a world where it, it, it's a crazy world. We see right being turned into wrong and wrong being turned into right. We see crime at an alarming level and rioting in the streets and our nation appears to be capitulating in many ways to other countries. Our once strong republic is being torn down from the inside. People that hate our nation are in positions of leadership. They're given national spotlight on a regular basis to spread vitriol and hatred for many of the things that our forefathers bled and died for. We're seeing the killing of children in astonishing numbers. They have politicized murder and they call it a choice. Sin is being branded as love, whether it's fornication or adultery or homosexuality. We're seeing agendas that are being pressed upon us to be more inclusive of sin and accepting of wickedness. Sin is pumped into homes through television and the internet. If there was a wholesome show, it's probably been removed by now by a woke crowd that wants to stifle Every voice that doesn't chant the same propaganda of sin. We're looking at a world that is rocking and reeling from all the things that society is trying to normalize. In a forum for a class that I was in, we begin to I was listening, this is a person that's going to be a nurse practitioner. She began to talk about their, she was looking for a housemate, a roommate. And the people were looking for someone that would join in with them. It says, and this just gives you an idea of some of our culture that we're looking at. And, and sometimes we, we live our sheltered lives and we don't see some of the culture that's really, that's out there, what's going on in our world. But this is a person person that is a that is getting ready to become a nurse practitioner. They their goal is to be an abortion provider and uh, be able to smash reproductive uh, counseling and things of this nature. And they they list this as an ideal housemate is someone who is interested in fostering that growth, uh, who can participate in an active and intentional capacity. We believe that systems of injustice, this prison industrial complex police and military capitalism must be dismantled. We want to support each other and hold each other accountable in the struggle against interlocking forms of oppression. We envision our new housemate as someone who is similarly committed to these goals and ideally someone who is enthusiastic about mutual aid and radical activism. You'd think, oh, that, that's not happening in America. No, it's happening. We got a world that's crazy. We see people being turned and twisted. Uh, they don't have any basis for what they're thinking and their thought process is. And I, I want to just point out to us today that, that the Word of God is what we got to base our life on. It's one thing that is solid and one thing that is sure. It's one thing that we can guarantee uh, doesn't change. Uh, we can look at a lot of ideas and a lot of ideals and, and, and thoughts, but but when it all boils down, we, we got to have something that's solid and sure. And, and the only thing that will be a sure anchor to our soul is the Word of God. Right. We've got to have the Word of God as a basis for our life and a basis for our thinking and a basis for what we do and how we live. A lot of people are twisted and torn and they don't know what to do and they don't know how to uh, act and they don't know where to turn. But 
I'm just, I'm helping somebody. I want somebody to catch a hold of this. But the, 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 the scripture says that his word is forever settled in heaven. It doesn't change. It's one thing you can look at science and you can know that it's going to change over time. Right? They say, oh, it's science. It won't change. Guaranteed. You go and do a little research and you find out how much science has changed over the last 100 years. What they said was science and was proven is not proven. I've done many, done many, many different studies, and, and you can find contradictory evidence all the time. I find studies that contradict themselves on a regular basis. But I found one thing that is sure. The Word of God doesn't change. It's an anchor that I can hold on to. It's a light to my path. It's a way that I can walk so that I can know what I need to do so that I can walk in the way that He wants me to walk. Amen. Scripture tells us in 2 Corinthians 4 and 4, In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. We live in a world where it's the blind leading the blind. The God of this world has blinded the minds of people. He has blinded their minds and made them so that they cannot see the hope that Jesus provides. They, they, they're, all they can see is this world. I take you for a moment to the book of Mark, Mark chapter 5, and we begin to see a man, uh, uh, we see Jesus showing up on the scene, and this man from Gadara meeting him on the shores. Mark 5 contains several miracles that Jesus does. But the first of them is Jesus meeting, he arrives on the shore that day. It says that they came over under the other side of the sea into the country of the Gadarenes. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit who had his dwelling among the tombs and no man could bind him, no, not with chains. Because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains and the chains had been plucked asunder by him and the fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. And always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs crying and cutting himself with stones. But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him and cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of the Most High God? I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. For he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. I tell you today, in our world, we're seeing a lot of people that are in this man's condition. And they say, oh, I'm not, I'm not devil-possessed. I'm not full of a devil. I understand. But this man had come to a place. You go and you, you begin to look at this. You see, the language is very clear. This man has no hope. This man is one that, this, that society has said, just move along. You, you're not worth anything. Society has given up on this man. They've tried everything they can think. They tried better. They tried putting him in stocks. They tried chaining him down, and he would break the chains and break the stocks and break the fetters. Those devils in him just made him so that he could not be sane. He could not follow the pattern that the society wanted him to. But the problem I see here is I see society has given him the pass and said, go ahead and move along. Just go hang out in the tombs. As long as you don't mess with us, we won't mess with you anymore. I want to tell somebody today that Jesus didn't give up on that man. Uh, Jesus didn't look at that man and say, I know you've got a legion of devils in you uh, and you're not worth anything. Uh, but rather, Jesus looked at him and said, I want you to be free. Uh, we live in a world that says, uh, hey, it's not, they're hopeless, uh, they're helpless. Uh, we live in a world, I want to just point it out, uh, that says, once an alcoholic, always an alcoholic. Uh, I want someone to understand uh, that when Jesus steps on the scene, uh, he's, a, he's a deliverer. Uh, he came to heal. Uh, he came to set free. He came to deliver and to set free. He came to heal the brokenhearted. He came to set at liberty them that are bruised. Jesus doesn't leave people bound. Right. 
Jesus came uh, that we might have life and that more abundantly. I live, we live in a world that wants to just say, hey, they're friends, they're too far out. They're messed up, they're too far gone. They're not worth our time. But I'm talking to somebody today uh, that Jesus cares. Jesus cares about you. He cares about your family. He cares about your life. He cares about you being clean and right before him. Jesus came that we might have life. This man from Gadara, his family, everyone else must have at some point given up on this man because now they can't bind him. They can't hold him. He sits in the, he lives in the tombs crying the torment of this man. The torment that he must face. You can hear it as he, it says, and always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs crying and cutting himself with stones. We're not talking about somebody that's got it all together. We're not talking about somebody that's, that's just got a little, a little problem. We're talking about somebody that is messed up. Society can't tame them. The world can't control them. And usually when the world can't control it, when society can't control it, we push it along. We make an excuse and say, well, we'll try to, we'll try to put you somewhere else. But I want somebody to catch this. Jesus doesn't leave people hopeless. Jesus doesn't leave us without an opportunity and a way of escape. Jesus provides hope in a dark world. Jesus came to give life and that more abundantly as I've said. He came that somebody could catch a hold of the fact that he's not leaving us comfortless. When we begin to look at sin, we understand that sin brings with it its own condemnation. The guilt of sin, the condemnation that comes from sin It's incriminating. Nobody has to tell us. We know there's a guilt. There's a burden of sin that comes upon us. There's a weight of sin that begins to press down upon us. And often we live in hope that somehow things will be different. How many times have we tried to find a solution to our sin problem? Our way. We try to find a solution by being kind or we try to find a solution to the guilt of sin to fix it on our own. But ultimately we end up in failure. One of the most hopeless positions a person can be in is when we cannot change our circumstances. When circumstances tie us and we are absolutely bound and we have no way of escape. It's a hopeless, it's a, it's a depressing feeling. It's a discouraging situation. But I find Jesus continually reaching to a blind man. A man that was blind and could not see. And healing his eyes. I see a deaf person being healed so they could hear. I see a lame person being able to walk. I see a person that's bound with devils that could not set themselves free. Being delivered and set free. Over and over I find in the word of God, I find Jesus reaching for somebody and taking them up and getting them out of the position they were in and providing them a hope and providing them a way of escape, providing them an opportunity for them to have life and to have life more abundantly beyond what they could have on their own. Jesus came that we might have that hope. The God of this world does blind the minds. But Jesus came to set free. He came to open the blinded eyes. 
He told John, uh, when John says, hey, he sent his disciples and say, are you the one we should look for? Or should we look for another? And he began to tell him, hey, the blind see, the lame walk, the deaf hear. What was he telling him? The Messiah is here. I've come that they might have life. I've come to give hope. I've come to give peace. I want somebody to know today before you walk out of this place that Jesus came to give hope. What you... What you're bound by. If you're bound by sin. If you're bound by the condemnation that comes from sin. The most beautiful thing. One of the most beautiful things in the whole world. Is the fact that though we were sinners. Christ died for us. Yes. Scripture tells us that in that while we were yet sinners. He died for us. The most beautiful thing is that though I may be a sinner. And I may have sinned. And, and I have sinned. And all you have to do. And the reality is that we can be left with that sin. Or we can find a way to get, a, get in touch with Jesus. And we can begin to connect with Him and say, forgive me. Verse John tells us that, it, that if any man confess our sins, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us. And to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I am so thankful that He didn't leave me with my sin, but He came to save me from my sin. In a world today, Often, as I deal with people, they say, Pastor Neff, preacher, leave me alone. Leave me alone. Let me go. Don't, don't tell me what's wrong. Don't call that sin. The sad part is they are they sin, sin. It's already there. No, I'm, I don't have to be the judge. The Word of God's already the judge. The Word of God says it's sin, it's sin. The beautiful thing is Jesus doesn't leave us without hope. But he provided a way and came uh, so that he could give us life. Uh, so that he could take our sin uh, and forgive us of our sin. Uh, I tell you, I feel sorry for people that want to try to try to minimize their sin. Uh, and want to try to say it's not that big of a deal. Uh, and then yet at night they're crying out wishing that they had some way of escaping it. I feel sorry for people that are stuck with their sin and they want to try their pride won't allow them to come and say, forgive me, Jesus. I need freedom from this sin. When Jesus is saying, I came to heal, I came to deliver, I came to set free. And they're saying, I'm not, I'm not the man of the terror. I'm not that bad. And yet Jesus is saying, come on now. Why do you want to live with that when I can forgive you of it and take that guilt? Yes. He wants to take the guilt. He came. That guilt is a beautiful thing. A lot of people don't like guilt. But guilt, the fact that we can feel it, is a wonderful thing. Because the, the guilt is there because of sin. The consequences are there if we don't repent of our sin. But Jesus doesn't leave us there. He again, he provides that way. He said, I'm coming. Huh? I'm going to make a way of escape. Huh? And he made that way through Calvary huh? so that we can repent of our sins. Huh? And we can do what the apostle Peter began. They said, they said unto him on the day of Pentecost, they said, hey, men and brethren, what shall we do? They realized they had crucified the Christ. Huh? They realized that they had put him there. And you and I got to recognize the same thing. My sin put him on that cross. They said, men and brethren, what shall we do? It's Acts 2 and 37. Verse 38 says, then Peter said unto them, repent. I'm so thankful we can repent of our sins. I'm so thankful I don't have to live with that condemnation any longer. He said, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. I want somebody to understand, we can be baptized in the name of Jesus for the remission, for the washing away of our sins. It's for the washing and the cleansing of our past as we have asked Him to forgive us. He is faithful and just to forgive us and He will wash away our sins in baptism and He wants to fill us with the gift of the Holy Ghost. That is His promise for you and I. He doesn't leave us where we were. He intends for us to have life. 
He intends for us to have hope. He intends for us to have great life. Life more abundantly. Today, Jesus wants us to have hope. It doesn't matter where you're from. It doesn't matter what you've done or where you're going. Every man, woman, and child has got a responsibility to repent of our sins. Get ourselves right with God. Ask Him to forgive us. Ask Him to cleanse our heart. Romans tells us the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Sin brings forth death. Sin, the consequences of sin is death. But Jesus doesn't leave us there. It doesn't matter if you are the man from Gadara. It doesn't matter who you are, where you've been. Jesus wants you to be free. In Mark chapter 5, we see the woman... Scripture says she had an issue of blood 12 years. 12 years she'd been bound by that affliction. She couldn't control it. She had been to every physician she could afford. She'd spent all that she had and was nothing better, but rather grew worse. But we read that when she finally touched Jesus, She was made whole. Whatever it is, Jesus came to heal. He came to set free. He came to save. He came to forgive. Before we leave this place today, I think we ought to just take a moment to talk to the Almighty God that came to give life. He came to give hope. Would you just stand with me as we bow our heads and begin to talk to the hope giver, the life giver today. Holy God, I thank you for your presence. I thank you for your spirit that's reaching out or even right now and ministering into our lives and into our hearts. Somebody came here today bound and stuck bound by sin understanding the consequences of that sin looking at hopelessness looking depression in the face but today you came you came to give life you came to give hope you came to give freedom God let your spirit continue to work Jesus, your word tells us that if we confess our sins, you are faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Jesus, today, I pray that you'd give life. I pray that you'd give hope. I pray that you'd give peace. I pray today that you would help somebody to be able to reach out and touch you. I pray that you'd give somebody a space and opportunity today to be able to reach out. Have their sins forgiven. If somebody desire today to be baptized in Jesus' name for the remission, the washing away of their sins. Today, God, I pray that you'd fill someone with the Holy Ghost. I pray you give somebody a hunger and desire for your spirit. You came that we might have life in that more abundantly. You came, oh God, to set free, to give hope, to give life, to provide deliverance. Thank you for what you're doing and what you're going to do. Let your spirit have its way. Holy God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank God. Thank God.